Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're I'm gonna here. and real. we're gonna answer the age-old question uh, that people keep asking us: How much money do comic book artists, comic book creators, actually make? The age-old question. Yeah, the age-old question. Yes, because like throughout the, the decades, throughout the centuries, people have always said throughout the last like five or six years, how much money do they make? Yes. Uh, it seems to be some hidden. Uh, uh, it's, it's like some secret uh, thing. Well, they don't want to tell you. No, they don't want to tell you, and. Um, the thing is, the information is basically out there if you know where to look for it. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how bad the comic book industry, the pay in the comic book industry is right now. And I think that sort of uh, uh, you know correlates with some of the really wacky behavior uh, that we see online. Because I think a lot of these people are just like pushed to the limit already. And, uh, you know, financial uh, strain will cause people to do and say crazy things. Yes, actually, that's very true. That is very true. That's very so, true. Hello. Um, hello. Oh, hey, Spiderhead Chris. Hello. Okay, so there is a site out there. It hasn't updated in uh, about two years. And, and let me just preface this by saying the site that did this is a site who was arguing that, no, no, everything's fine here. Everything's fine. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about that. Well, this yeah. is, this is then, actually... Uh, but then they haven't updated in two years. Now they're like, oh, maybe it's not so great. We're not updating this. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we <laughs> We're going to talk about everything. Will this include online comics or just physical comics? I was comics? planning on both. Yeah. We're going to talk about both. There is, there is kind of a difference. There actually are people who... I think, honestly, you're making more money online than some of the folks yes. actually working on... I would uh, 100% agree with that. ...comics for which publishers. Which we're going to get there. Hello. Yeah, so we're going to get there, because we've done both. So uh, we can we can kind of talk about at least what we know We kind of from... quit the one, and we're still on the <laughs> others. What's that tell you? Yeah, so, okay, so... So uh, we can talk about it a little bit, because we've actually uh, done both. We have a lot of friends that work in both... Uh, both digital comics and print comics and we can kind of give you a ballpark even we have friends that work in in uh, traditional publishing mm -hmm. plus working on monthly books so we can mm -hmm. kind of give you an idea of kind okay, of what you get, can expect they get the idea okay they get it they get it it's well the good. idea is is not a good idea it's it's pretty low yeah. run Actually, run so, far away so the quickest way to find a ballpark of of what uh comic book artists are being paid today is actually fairpagerates.com now they haven't updated since 2006 because my personal opinion is things have gotten worse uh since i agree uh or i'm sorry 2016 since 2016 they haven't updated since 2016 so they had a survey they sent out they were asking people for information i think once it got out about how dire uh the comic book industry actually was people just kind of like didn't want well, to give the information it's like pulling teeth that's why they did an anonymous survey because it's like getting it's pulling teeth that people will tell you what they make they're not going to tell you yeah like if you ask them oh you know i'm a professional I'm professional, but how much do you make? I'm a professional, but do you know you can have to live on? I'm a professional. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we're going to talk about that, too. We're going to talk about people who may do comics. Uh, oh, yeah. Hello, everybody. Yeah, not safe for work did really well. Oh, my God. If you do not, porn, you're sad. If you do porn on Patreon, you're going to make money. I mean, you're just you're going to make money. But We won't know, do porn, even though we kept yeah. joking we are going to do Fifty Shades of Crimson, but we never did Oh, my did God. It. But anyway, I mean, go ahead. Um, okay, so these rates uh, on fair page rates are actually pretty accurate. Um, we're talking, th this is now, this is work for hire at uh, Marvel DC or, uh, you know, IDW Boom, whatever, the indie publishers. Um, so for scripts and mainstream comics, you're talking Marvel DC, you're talking 80 to to $100 a page. Uh, there may be some writers that get significantly more than that. I think they get royalties on top of it. But you look at writers and they can juggle multiple books per right, month. Right, you can do many. Right, and there are people who are writing like four or five books a month. Right. So that adds up, you know. Uh, indie, you're talking 25 to 50 bucks a page. Again, it's not not great. Um, covers for Marvel DC, 600 to $700. I, now, at one point, I had heard that DC was paying over $1,000. I think it depends for, who you are. It depends on who you are. This is. is an average, I think. Uh, and it depends on what, what kind of cover you're doing. Like a painted cover, um, you know, obviously, I think they're going to pay more for that right. than they are, you know. And if, if you're a name, you know obviously i know you're doing the hurry up thing <laughs> i'm trying to we're getting people in we're getting people in um okay indie comics 200 to 500 dollars for a That's cover right that is absolutely right i've done uh done for... work for idw and i will tell you it's right in the middle of that so mm -hmm. um but that was back then so i don't know what they're paying now because they don't have any money <laughs> okay so line art mainstream 200 to 300 dollars a page this sounds rightish. There are some folks who are actually making more than that. Now, I've heard that Marvel's actually paying under $200 a page now for newbies. Uh, I, I can't 
substantiate that, but I have heard under $200, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes for new artists. Um, indie comics, 100 to $250 a page. Again, that is uh, very right. Okay, I was waiting for somebody to ask about that. Uh, did we hear about Jeremy Hambly? Yes. Uh, and it's freaking disgusting. Uh, it's absolutely disgusting. Uh, I know everybody's talking about it now. We're kind of we were kind of hanging back and not really. I mean, I did say a little bit about it on Twitter, um, but it's uh, you know, it's, it, I mean, we've gotten to this point right now, and I'm going to go off on a tangent here, but gotten to a point now where we had uh, some people who didn't like what other people had to say, making making threats of violence, fantasizing about violence, and now they've crossed a line into actual violence and i think what i'm really disgusted by is the fact that gen con seems to be turning a blind eye uh to that they've uh, a lot of people you know reached out to gen con they were trying to silence them on their twitch stream um i don't know what the fallout from this is going to be i think it's going to be i think it's going to be um bad i don't think it's going to end well I mean, they're going to use the, it didn't happen on our property, which is true. Yeah. But, you know, if it, okay, if, I'm just looking at it. If it had been any other way, if it had been, he hit one of them, you know dang well they would have done something about it. No, but this is, I mean, but he was I'm hit by saying, a guy who wears, you know, punch a Nazi t-shirts, you know, like just casually where, you know, I, I mean, and the dude thinks that anyone who, um... I mean, I'm a redhead, and I have and and I have the temperament to go with it. And I would never think it was okay because I didn't like somebody to go up and punch them. The thing that gets me about this, and um, I, I guess I mean we can go off we can go off well, on a slight tangent slightly. here. Slightly. Slightly. Slight tangent here because we we actually haven't we were, I, I actually debated about doing a video on it. I wanted to wait and see what the actual fallout was from this, right. um, and what uh, you know what kind of legal action was being taken if uh, the police actually did get involved. I know he he apparently filed. Um, you know, charges against the guy or whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, we, we've just, this is a line that's, it's so weird because the people who are against uh, conservative or comics gators or whatever group they want to call them, um, they're constantly saying that they are afraid of physically being attacked and abused by these people, but they're the ones plotting to attack others well and actually participating in physical violence. Well, that, the Nazi thing. That's what we keep talking about, too. It's like, I don't think Nazi means what you think Nazi means. Like, they're totally misusing what Nazi means. They don't... You know? No, basically Nazi anybody who disagrees mean, Nazi, Nazi does not mean somebody who disagrees with you. Um, but then that's that's implying that some people actually had the education to know what a Nazi is, because you ask some people their age where things are, and they can't tell you. Capitals and countries. I'm just saying. <sighs> but, common um, core. Um, yeah. <laughs> but common I'm core like, I, I, I don't think Nazi means what they think Nazi means. But that's another story from another day. But go ahead. Well, no, that's, I mean, this is common knowledge. It's, it's just, I mean, the, 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 at this point, the. There's always nutters out there. What did you call it? Whack, what, wackadoo? Oh, wackadoo. I call him a wackadoo. wackadoo. Yeah. I was like, wackadoo. Um, we need to use that word more. Clearly, he's got some mental issues going on. You do not just walk up to people. You yeah, there's got more to it than this. And punch them. Uh, and punch them. You know, that's freaking ridiculous. Um, that's how you make me mad. Uh, I'm coming for you. But that's one thing. I mean, they, they can say what they want to about comic skaters. They can say what they want to about conservative uh, fans of gaming and, and comics. Um, they're not out there physically attacking people. I mean, we've had, mm -hmm. you know, Ethan Van Skyver, uh, there was a run-in with uh, the one establishment he was at and was tore up because he was going to be there. Um, there were threats against diversity in comics. Uh, and now, you know, Jeremy Hambly is, is actually, the line has been crossed and he has been physically attacked. I mean, I hate the... Look, if you're if you're fighting Nazis, you're hunting Nazis. You guys are the Nazis because you're the ones actually physically attacking people who disagree with you. Um, Someone hit back. Yeah, you don't want to ever make a neon mad. He he would hit back, and it would not be pretty. <laughs> so I'm just saying. Uh, I spent well. <laughs> look, I, I don't want to say anything because I don't want to like. I don't want to invite any. But uh, let's just say I I did spend a year in alternative ed, and I used to get into a lot of fist fights. And leave it at that. <laughs> so I've been in a lot of fights. Um. Anyway, we're talking I just about verbally assault people. Uh, I've kicked your butt. Before. Yeah. Well, That's I think I think a line's been crossed. There's no coming back from this now, and I don't know. Um, yeah, it's just I, 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 I don't go. think it's like I don't think that means what you think it means. It's kind of like the word that comes to mind. <laughs> Pretty much. Like, and the thing is, I mean, how we got uh, kind of dragged into this whole because they called you that. They called me a Nazi. They called me a Nazi because because you dare post marvel numbers and say oh no are we in trouble you nazi how they, literally you? that's all it took it took me uh 
Well, we got somebody in a loud motorcycle. Um, okay, so we had, uh, you know, I got I kind of dragged in this whole situation just by posting Marvel numbers and speculating as to why their sales are down. Uh, completely middle of the road, you know, uh, analysis of it, and and I got called a Nazi. I'm like, I supported Barack Obama. What are you talking about? I'm a freaking Nazi. <laughs> what are you talking about? I had no idea this was going on. Even though I worked in comics, I had no idea that this, because I'd stepped away from mainstream comics for a couple of years. I had well, no idea we, we any went, of this was going on. Which is back to what we're talking about. We went more right. to the other online comics, which we'll talk about the differences of that here soon. But yeah, it's just a, there's never any excuse to hit no, somebody. No, I, I don't care. Because you disagree with right. them. Right. I think, you know, I mean... Okay, fine. You want to yell at each other until you're blue in the face or whatever. That's fine. I mean, personally, I think everybody's sitting down and actually talking it I get out. red in the face. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get blue in the face. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> yes. uh, I, I do. You get very red in the face. I've seen I've seen Geeky's anger. My eyes get um, huge. But, uh, yeah, so it's, it's a disgusting situation. Uh, again, I, I, you know, we kind of refrained from posting a video on it because we wanted to know what was going on what the fallout was going to be and we may have something more to say on it next yeah. week once we figure out exactly what's going on because it's still yeah. in the process of unfolding uh very unfortunate very unfortunate uh disgusting disgusting thing yeah, so anyway so my, my face matches my hair my face might get redder than my hair um yeah actually it's funny because um we're, we're, it kind of relates when we have online comics like our character mia in the comic we do with shadow binders um is very expressive and you told me later, like, I, I based that on you. <laughs> you told yeah, me. when she gets angry, I'm she like, She wags her finger and she's like, Rah! Yeah, I've, I've been on the receiving end of that uh, quite a few times. So, anyway. But I'm still here. I'm still alive. I didn't hurt you. Well, see, I don't I don't resort to that. You never punched me in the back of the head. I have never punched you, so it's all good. Um, <laughs> I, did, I did punch somebody for calling me red once, but that's a whole other thing. He wouldn't leave me alone. Uh, so I did punch him, and he was my dad's boss. But yeah. that, was a whole, that was a long time ago. Yeah, I've got I've gotten into some fights. It's been a while. It's been a while, but only if a, you make us. Yeah, and only if you get. Well, we have to. Some people have to have souls to begin with, and I, I I debate that with some people. I'm soulless. I don't have a soul. That's not true. <laughs> but some people <laughs> have to have souls dead. to begin with. But you know, anyway. Oh, okay. So okay. So anyway, uh, we are talking about page rates and kind of why I think uh, a lot of uh, indie comics creators, especially, are. Uh, stressed out and acting like uh, insane people on Twitter, and they're um, is because like they're a dog poor. trying to protect their bone. Like pretty much, kind of, I yeah, I think yeah. they're very very my stressed bone, out. Um, so line art, hundred to two hundred fifty dollars a page. Yeah, that's about accurate. IDW, uh, I know it was about one hundred hundred twenty five dollars a page yeah. for line art. We're talking pencils and inks. Mm -hmm. We're talking ten to sixteen hours worth of work for mm -hmm. like one hundred and twenty five bucks if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. uh, very very ghetto. Very ghetto pay. Color art, uh, mainstream 80 to 135. Yes, that's accurate. I know people who are getting higher rates than I did. Unfortunately, I usually colored on indie comics, so I got in the 20 to 80 dollar range, which, which is, is correct. Which is and correct. And we actually paid a color. We always paid within that range, so um, we were paying fairly. Yeah. Uh, well, this is not fair. That this is the this is kind of the irony of all this is when you start you know uh, breaking the numbers down by the hour, uh, it's it's not good. Uh, gingers are awesome. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, Unless you make us mad. Letters, 20 to $25 mainstream, 10 to 20 indie. Yeah. That's, again, that's right. Uh, I think most indie books, uh, people I w was uh, talking to, they were getting like $15 a page, you know? So, um, anyway, so this, they haven't updated this since 2016. And I think 2015 is probably identical. Oh, uh, they actually didn't have very many respondents. This is accurate. Oh, they probably though. found I out mean, about it. At least as far as I know, I this is this thing? is actually very accurate. Um, okay. Anyway, so we're gonna shut this down. This is fairpagerates.com if you want to look and see, uh, you know, approximately what those. But page that rates was from are. a couple years ago, so. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about. Whoopsie, I don't want that. Ads, ads, ads. Okay, this is uh, coming from Comics Beat. I've actually gotten a okay, little bit. Okay, this is what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, I've actually gotten into uh, gotten into it a little bit with Howie McDonald on Twitter before when Meltdown Comics uh, closed its doors. Uh, I basically said this is like really really bad. This is a really bad thing that Meltdown is closing because Meltdown was um, pretty much the uh, you know comic shop of the Hollywood elite, 
mm-hmm. they couldn't keep their doors open. Mm-hmm. That's bad. That's really, really bad. And she's like, oh, no, comics are fine. It's all fine here. I'm like, it's oh, my God, fine. are you serious? I'll, 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 we're all fine here. How are uh, you? You know, and again, I'm not knocking Heidi McDonald. Uh, she's been a journalist. She's been working in comics uh, as a journalist for years. She's worked as an editor. Um, you have ginger blood in my veins. It's better than having ginger blood elsewhere. Um, That's how much you make me. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, the numbers are, this is from a couple of years ago and it has not gotten better. In fact, from the people I've talked to, it's gotten worse because we're seeing uh, a lot of these comics publishers tightening their belts because mm-hmm. the industry is in the freaking gutter well, right I now. I know that, you know, uh, they would give money for publishing deals for a, um, I'm a mind blank, what they call that, uh, advance. In advance, yeah. Um, they would, it used to be a lot higher and mm-hmm. now it's much lower than it used to be a few years ago. You might be working for two years for like five or ten thousand dollars two years worth of work so yeah it, and i'm gonna talk about that it's it's it used to be like about 10 ish years <laughs> ago paint. ms paint well there you well, go i hey, mean homestuck homestuck yeah, i, I mean homestuck home made a ton yeah, yeah. So. um so uh, the thing about the, the advances for it, and this is mainstream publishing we're talking like scholastic first second books uh you know any any like mainstream publisher like that that publishes uh, primarily in the, the the book market, uh, they used to give advances of, as I understand it, fifteen to twenty five thousand dollars for a a newbie graphic novelist. Okay, now it sounds like wow, that's a decent chunk of money until like Geeky said, you break it down, it's basically two years two worth, three of, years worth, of two work. to three years worth of work, and you don't get all the money up front. You get uh, it usually comes in in three chunks, mm-hmm. like you get some at the beginning, you get uh, some when you hit the the halfway point, and then you get it when you you turn so the complete book. What? You, you still have to work another job. You know, people have this idea in their head, I'm going to get a book deal and I can quit my job. And it's like, I mean, um, the one person, I'm not going to name names, but they're a Canadian author, was said the only reason they got to do it was because they were living pretty much on assistance, weren't they? From, yeah, I'm not, there, names. I, I'm not going to name names, but there is one, um, there is one uh, pretty well-known graphic novel creator who has had many, many book deals and uh, this person basically came out and had a blog post and, and was sort of thrashed for it, but said the only way that uh, they could make a living doing comics. Now, this person was Canadian. I'm sorry, that's not good. There's a lot of graphic novels that are Canadian. Mm-hmm. But said that, uh, you know, they were basically living on assistance, you know, in addition to the advance to survive long enough to be able to make the graphic novel. And that that is a very common scenario mm-hmm. um, in in. Yes, April O'Neil doesn't have red hair. She is fake. We've discussed this together, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not happy about them making her no longer a ginger. So well, she wasn't a ginger originally in the the, the original comic. Hush she had, now. She had black hair. In I original. know, okay, but we're not talking saying. about that. Okay, but the, the April O'Neil most those are dark days before dark they were days. awesome. That was before the the turtles were were color coded. Uh, they all had red. They all had red. That was uh, the dark masks days and... before it was awesome. Yeah. Anyway, so um, this was again. This was another um, sort of impromptu uh, 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 survey that was done by uh, a site called Sketched, and they had a couple hundred people respond. And they're talking about oh yeah, I remember that. You know, the kinds of money. You know, again, this is really heavily skewed because we don't know exactly who they went out to. I think it was a very wide uh, selection of cartoonists. We had everybody from web comics uh, cartoonists to syndicated cartoonists. Right. Um, so what we're seeing is that of the people that they surveyed, almost half made less than $12,000 in a year. That's, I'm, I'm going to say that's probably the webcomic artists and, or the indie, like the IDW right. boom, uh, those people, um, 17.9%, 12,000, 24,000. This probably, I would say the 12 to $24,000 range is the average. If somebody is working for like IDW or boom, probably. I think that's probably what they're making. Uh, just based on the page rates. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, one example here with this uh, Brian Chirilla, uh, who his, his schedule is just, it's absolutely insane. Uh, we had 10% made 25 to 49. I would say these are probably your, your mid range, like Marvel DC guys. Now, uh, now of course you go up the food chain a little bit. You're going to have, you are going to have people make 50 to 75,000. Um, and I think those are the people who probably are established creators and who are also selling a lot of merchandise and stuff at conventions. The Dark Ages I'm of Turtle Con. That was funny. Brother I'm Turner sorry. Brother. I'm just watching it. It's hilarious. Go ahead. <laughs> um. So here, there's a question right here for you. Okay. 
Uh, is there an average number of copies sold required for an indie know, mainstream it drops comic? Yearly. Yes. <laughs> it drops yearly. It used to be. Here's the truth. Back in the day, back in the day, uh, I mean, we're talking. The day for you. The day for me. Okay. The day for other The Jim Shooter era of Marvel. Okay. Uh, books, books, Specify. books were on the chopping block if they sold under 400,000 copies. 400,000 copies. There have been very, very few books in the last five to 10 years that have, have sold anywhere close to that. And usually they were like a loot crate, something or other. Um, yeah. So most, com yeah, comics never really paid well. No, but it's worse now than it was before. Cause there used to be, there used to be some royalties involved. Uh, there was a lot of selling of original pages and artwork. And there was a market for that. Now so many people work digitally. I don't think there's yeah. as, as, as many original, um, uh, is geeky related to Robin sparkles? No, <laughs> <laughs> No one tell him about the illegal South Korean illustration sweatshops. Yeah, that's a whole nother manga and anime. Well, it's not just that. Even the comic yeah. industry has been shipping stuff off like crazy um, to other India. countries. Yeah, for India, coloring. Because most... it, it used to be cheaper. Yeah. Now it's actually not cheaper, but they just still ship it over there. Um, but they keep doing that. But anyway, so the point being is... Uh, the point being is that comics pays jack shit now. And well, I think, it kind of has paid jack shit for a while. It has paid jack shit for I a while. I wonder who jack shit is and why he gets blamed for everything. I know. There, why there probably is, is a guy. Cheap ass? There probably why is, is a guy named jack shit. That guy probably gets picked on uh, so bad. Well, these guys, it's 200. jack shit. Let's keep the crap out of them. The 200,000 to $1 million people, I'm going to say they are. Uh, Lying? No, sorry. <laughs> they are probably either, we're talking like very, very top tier like DC writers, like your, you know, uh, you know, Grant Morrison or somebody like that, maybe would, maybe would, because we were talking royalties and stuff like that. Uh, or they I are call BS on one million dollars. Yeah, I know. Or I call BS. I'm sorry. Or they are, um, they are, uh, syndicated cartoonists. Like they, they sent this out to, um, you know, yeah. Let's see. How do we remedy? How do we remedy it? That's a good question. We've um, all been trying to figure out for a everybody while. Everybody has been trying to figure this out. I, you know how we don't remedy it is attack potential customers on yes. social media and then and try to <laughs> and try to and try to push in your personal agenda, right? And things too. I mean, if you're hired to do a job, you're hired to do a job and write that character. You're writing that character. You're not writing yourself. I mean, as a writer you always put yourself into what you do. There's always a little bit of who you are in a story, which is why some writers yeah. re resonate with uh, readers better than others. That's always the case. You're all, you can't write, you have to write, you can't write without writing yourself into it. Right. But when you're writing yourself into it to the place where it's about more about you and it's more about your fanfic about yourself as that character than it is about the character, then you've got problems. Yeah. I think, well, somebody brought up Todd McFarlane and, and Mike Magnolia. And I think, I think that's, um, that's actually a, a good point because a lot of people making the big money in comics actually aren't making the, the big bucks off of the comic books. They're making um, money off of the ancillary uh, merchandise. Um, okay, what am I looking at here? <laughs> Art slavery. Nothing can go wrong. I EBS guess kind of how it is now. Yeah, EVS only made a half a million. You're supposed to pay everybody. Yeah, you know, it's funny because people think that, like, when you've got a whole team of people and you've got a bunch of books to publish and ship and deliver, like, somebody um you know could make a half million dollars and still only have like fifty thousand dollars right for by themselves the time it's done because you've yeah. got all these people you have to pay and taxes and all this other yeah we're gonna stuff. talk about comics here in a second um, which is where we're gonna head next there's yeah. a reason we're mentioning this yeah Go ahead. okay so web comics people uh, you know it's very it's a very tricky let's talk about um, the history first so web comics people, what did web comics come about web comics came about because people had stories to tell and they couldn't get in on these big places or their story was too different and it was their own story that they, well, they didn't want to do superheroes for example and they started doing comics on the internet which was very smart right and then the comics on the internet there was, used to be so few of them that the ones that were there got lots and lots and lots of hits like you had your let me think uh who's been around for a while uh Sorry, uh, breakfast Pen cereals Penny Arcade, Penny Arcade uh, uh, Scott Kurtz, what, PVP, um, questionable, content, questionable content, that kind of uh, stuff. Gunner Craig. Yeah, um, so you had, even yeah. though I saw Gunner Craig in a bargain bin yesterday. <laughs> you did. Um, you did. It's I been did. sitting there it for months. It was a months. dollar. Anyway. Um, Gunner Craig has been in the bargain bin so for months. So you have those people, and, and the only adopters had like a, a, a big audience and a lot of advertising money before, they adverti before the dark days of the advertising money, and they could do this full time. But that's all changed. <laughs> so now you have thousands of webcomics starting every day. 
Yes. Having your own site isn't going to work anymore like it did. You can't no. advertise now. So like, no, Project Wonderful, that, that's a huge, like, we're even um, saying here, well, like, you can. It's just what? not as effective. It's not as effective because you're going to have to go through AdWords if those sites even qualify for AdWords. Right, and AdWords um, is expensive. Because Project Wonderful was basically a lifeline for many people starting new webcomics to advertise on other mm-hmm. webcomics, and it's gone now. Uh, you know, thanks. Hi, yeah, webcomics like um, merchandise money to a point, but here's the problem: they always and, and they always tell you this, and I agree with them. You, just because you start a webcomic does not mean you should make merchandise. Um, you have to have an audience yeah. to buy your merchandise. Same for crowdfunding, same for Patreon. You have to have built a platform to get to those places to actually monetize the things. And now it's harder than ever to build a platform. Yeah, we uh, now we had some experience with the licensing because we like. Um, about license. Oh, we did go. Yes, yeah, somebody said about licensing Shadowbinders. We actually had. Well, we actually had an option for Shadowbinders for an animated series, and it just didn't happen. Well, so. we also had optioning um, <laughs> that they were talking to us about doing games with it. Yeah, we were talking to the the. Which I still don't. I'm still not giving up on that because it would make no, amazing. No, we're not. Games. We were talking to the folks uh, who worked on uh, Catan at one point. They were. They, they came yeah, back we were, two or three times. Yeah, but that was back us. when we were much bigger than we are now. Um, well, they still came back like a year ago asking yeah. about it too. But you know what I'm saying? You can do that, but you have to have something. They, I'll tell you what. We talked to somebody who did licensing and what they say? How big's your platform? Yes. If you're getting less than millions and millions of this and that, we don't, we aren't interested. I mean, that's basically the, the, the fact of the matter. Mm-hmm. We talked to somebody licensing. That's what they said. Um, but the thing with web comics now is you can you, you might not make any money building your platform. Like if you're putting on webtoons, you're not going to get paid for that. However, if you build your platform, you can then take it to other places to monetize. Hence the merchandise. Hence the other things. Yeah, I mean how web comics basically worked was a lot of times they got paid on the back end. Or in the case of Penny Arcade, I love how everybody. Hey, yeah, Geeky should run Star Wars, man. She would. Kick, kick, kick ass, ass with Star Wars. That's right. Luke would still be alive if Geeky was Luke in charge. Luke would still be alive. Luke, he would. Luke would be alive and he would be kicking ass. He'd have like like three lightsabers and he'd just be like the best freaking. No, this is why I'm not running it. You're running it. <laughs> Go back to your point. Anyway, um, my Darth Sparkles. <laughs> Uh, some days yeah so okay once a month what were we talking about we were talking about oh no web comics <laughs> so web comics how, how it usually works it, or how it did work was they'd build the platform up and then later you know the money would come later so you would work uh, you know well, for you free had basically ads and stuff you could still make money yeah. while you build it up but go ahead um, now Penny Arcade I think is interesting because everybody uses Penny Arcade as an example of look at this successful web comic really Penny Arcade's comic is I mean at this point is like the least profitable part of their yeah. business model like they're basically a a gaming blog that has a comic mm-hmm. on it um so I Skyver was i watched skyver for our yeah marja that's right i was gonna say it but i didn't say it i let him go on about luke let him believe what he wanted to believe but i was thinking in my head the marja movie cambria will be back it's all good. Does anybody <laughs> read, does, yeah, it would be awesome. Does anybody read Penny Arcade? I don't think so. I don't so. even know, honestly. They kind of, well, I don't know. I mean, they're kind of, I don't know. They, they were, um, they're big for a while, and then I know they had a lot of backlash for the Dick Wolves yes, thing. Yes. Um, and then they did that thing they got they, sued that, by the Strawberry Shortcake people and all well, stuff. They had that thing where they did that, um, the contest, too. What was that called again? Oh, um, the strip search? Strip that, search, yeah, yeah. which turned out to be, like, yeah. They basically just mined a bunch of IPs for Hiveworks, but that's another story. Yeah, they did, because, so. like, all those people went to Hiveworks, I know. <laughs> but, right? um, this is um, funny. So, Luke never died, though. It's everything around it died. That's right. That Looking at true. the wrong. It's all about perspective. Luke was just getting the hell out of a bad situation. It's all about your point of view. Luke's just like, I am effing out of here. Like, this galaxy cannot right. be saved, and I am gone. <laughs> that's what you think about comics, too. Yeah, okay, right. So, back to webcomics. Okay, so what can you do to actually... Um, to actually do something about the comic. Well, we actually did a podcast about this a long time ago. Long time ago. We told, um, we tried to warn people. We tried to warn people. We said, Hey guys, uh, things are changing. The money's moving. Everything's changing. They're like, Oh, you are so pessimistic. No, negative. You're this, so okay. negative. I'm going to go off for a minute. Okay. Sit down. Let me tell you, let me spin you a tale. So let me, okay. There is a difference between honesty and negativity. If you're being a dick just to be a dick, you're being a negative asshole. If you're saying, hey, look, I'm going to give you honest opinion on something, honest look at something, honest critique of something, that is not negativity. And I'm not going to, there's a lot of people, especially in webcomics, 
that are very, very, very sensitive and really should have no business in comics because you need a thick skin for comics, but they're very, very overly sensitive to any kind of criticism whatsoever. Um, they're often going on about their depression and their anxiety and everything else, which I have depression and anxiety too, but I mean, whatever. But yeah. what I'm just saying is they, they immediately get their, themselves all upset. Like you're being negative. You're being negative. I'm like, I'm not being negative. I'm trying to flip and help you. I'm telling you the truth just because you don't like the truth. Just because you don't want it. You won't hear it. Just because you can't handle the truth doesn't make it negative nor does it make it less true geeky is everybody's mother I'm dishing out the truth baby that's right um well you have to because the thing is is that like with being you know there's so many people out there that are i i guess they call it like hope marketing like they're constantly like seriously it's like a preying on these hopeful artists they're like oh if you pay me so much money per month i'll they have they do. There was they a did. couple of people that have podcasts and like training crap. They had this and... one program. I remember it was ridiculously expensive and basically they were telling you things that anybody could, you know, know. Oh, thank you. You did not have to give us money, but thank you. Uh, what is your opinion on games based on comic books such as the Injustice series? It depends on um, whether or not the, the, the comics are good. Now, I, I do remember there's some really bad comics games like back in the 90s. Like, mm -hmm. oh my God, yeah, Superman 64 was garbage. Uh, but Injustice was actually pretty decent from what I remember. And I like the Mortal Kombat versus DC. I thought that was kind of cool. Well, there are basically um, a lot of things in comic books now. I mean, but people don't know that. People would just assume, I mean, they do know it, but you know what I'm saying? Right. When people think of characters, they aren't thinking of the comic books. They're thinking of the the cartoon shows, the TV shows, the, the movies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that when they're basing games, are they actually basing them on comics anymore? Or are they basing them on the other uh, wider IP? Well, here's the thing. Okay, so um, Battle Chasers is a good example. Battle Chasers uh, came out. It was an image. I think it was an image. No, it wasn't an image. What, was it an image? I don't remember. I don't anyway, know. it came out like years and years and years ago, <laughs> like back in the late nineties. And it only had, I think it only had a, like, like a 12. Capcom awesome. is awesome. Um, we know some guys that we actually know the, we're good friends with some guys at Udon. Um, so, uh, they do some awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, but, uh, so the battle chasers ended as a comic book. Um, um, I think it was Joe Mad did did Battle Chasers, and it came back as a, a role playing game. Just like last year, it came back as a role playing game to kind of continue the story um, from there. And I actually have a copy of it, and I haven't played it yet. So we'll have to live stream Battle Chasers the game. When did you get that? They gave it to us. They gave oh, it to the PR firm. They keep giving us stuff. We have to actually do stuff. I know, but then I never <laughs> have time to play these games. They keep giving us games. They're like, could you play this game and review it? And I'm like, yeah, okay, some year. You know, we'll try. But I do have a copy of Battle Chasers, the role playing game. Yeah, you should do um, it with her, with a. Trisket, Squid King. Yes. Yeah, so you should yeah we need to get Squid anyway, King back on. so let's get back on track. Stop getting off topic. Well, anyway. Joe Mad runs a game studio because Joe Mad couldn't make enough money in comics to pay the bills. Now well, he's doing games. There's a lot of people in comics that have moved on to other things because it just, they don't have any money. And that's what we say in the end goal for a lot of these people. That's what the Webtoons thing is. I want IP. I want movie, TV deals because there's more money in that. So their end game is to keep just jumping to wherever they think the money is. They're like, yeah. you know, carpet baggers well, for that, comics. Well, that's that's exactly what it is. And they're using comics as a springboard. And a lot of the people who are in comics now to be... I know. I wasn't saying it that way. We're just trying. <laughs> Um, to, a lot of people we get all this free stuff. Well, no, the problem is the free stuff always comes with strings attached. It's like we will give you these free things, but you need to spend Everything time comes reviewing. With the price. You need to review the stuff and whatever. Magic comes with the price, um, dearie. It does. Uh, so, what was I talking about? I don't know. What were you talking about? I don't know. We were just... talking about. We were talking about. I don't remember. Nerd wonder. Yeah, she's been she's been uh, talking to us a lot on Twitter lately. She's pretty cool. Um, what were you talking about? Uh, you're talking about we're talking about games. We're talking about IP, and then oh, we're talking. No, okay. The end goal of, of the modern. This, we do this a lot. Of, yeah, the, the end goal life. of like, the modern we comic career. Where here, am I? What day is it? Go here, ahead. here is here is what is actually going on in comics now with these creators. Like Geeky said, they oh, are carpet, carpet bagging. baggers. Okay, they're carpet baggers. They really don't want to work in comics. Um, they're only using the comic book industry to get themselves enough cred to go into television and movies. That is what they actually want. They're just, they're apparently just passing Apparently you through. can do that with no experience and being a co-writer on a couple shows. Suddenly you can run a whole show and ruin it. But Suddenly another, you can be in charge of Shira. A, that's another story entirely. <laughs> uh, but there's, there's a game being played and I'll just, I'll just come out and say it. There's a game being played right now by some like agents and Hollywood types. Um, 
that are basically they're you know picking people out of obscure to try to push them through to you know get them in the comics get enough experience in comics to push them through to television movies mm -hmm. um and this is just the the way it is now. Uh, like there, nobody is going into comics now. Very few people are going into comics now. Like I love comics. I grew up reading comics. I just want to make comics for a living. They're not. They're like I. Well, wanna... the people that want to do that usually are doing web comics because yeah. they're doing it because they want to and they love it, not because they're expecting to get something out of it. Um, Pet peeve of mine is people who accuse you of gatekeeping when you're talking about comics and they show up talking about some some adaptation. Literally different things. Yeah, well, that's true, actually. Yeah. And we run into, we, you can't, we get in so much trouble, I can't even tell you. Um, we don't fit anywhere, honestly. We get in trouble with webcons people. They're all our friends until we start speaking up and then they're mad at us. But yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, the thing is that Star Comics, yeah, it's entirely true. I mean, we were on the other side of it. Uh, we actually were, um, you know, talking, I mean, I can't go into too much detail, but we were talking to Hollywood people. We did we have a literary agent um, from New York. Actually, the agent we had is the agent for many of our favorite people on Twitter. Uh, but again, you know, I will tell you just from the other side of it that, yeah, the end goal is always uh, the TV and movie deals. Always. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not, nobody wants to stay in comics. And I think the people who are not getting picked up uh, for TV and movies are very, very bitter. There are a lot of people who have been uh, paying dues for many years and they're not getting those big deals. But there's also people who think that they're owed something because they've done, okay, I'm not going to name names either, but there's some people we know who have done comics for a long time, web comics mm -hmm. for a long time and the web comics are not popular no matter what they do and they, do, they won't change. Like, I mean, here's my thing too. Well, hello. Hello, Nicholas. Here's the thing too. If you're doing something, we, we had a kill switch on ours. We had a legit kill switch. If it doesn't do anything within a year, we're not going to waste more time on it, even though it's, it's really important to me and we got to go back doing it because it means a lot more to me than it does to, to you, but I love hey, it. No, it does mean a lot. But, to um, we had a kill switch on ours. If it doesn't hit a certain, if we couldn't get an audience within a year, we were going to kill it. And I understand that's actually short for web comics. You need to give it more time. But there are people who have been doing it for years and their stuff never got popular, no matter what they did. Um, it maybe wasn't good enough. It didn't resonate with people, um, et cetera. And instead of thinking, maybe I need to change this. Maybe I need to do something else. They just continue with the same thing that's not working, which is like the definition of insanity. Yeah. But it's anyway, like, and then they think because they've done it, I've done my thing for 15 years. I'm owed a nomination. I'm mm -hmm. owed a book deal. And it's like, you know, you're not owed anything, even though some people I think deserve it, don't get them. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are people who work tirelessly and thanklessly in comics for years and they never get anywhere. And then like, you know, somebody else walks in and they get handed a movie deal. Yeah. They're going to get bitter. I mean, you know, they work in comics for years and they see some guy pop up on YouTube and, and he winds up with a half million dollars. You know, yeah, they're going to take pot shots at him because you know, they're crazy jealous. Um, okay. So mega Tokyo. Yeah. I don't even know if he's still doing mega Tokyo. I'm trying to, I'm trying to read down the, there's a lot of comments. Thank you. Uh, those types of walking the big two of the little experience as opposed to the people grinding work there. Yes, they do. Um, some of those people actually have literary agents that get them in the door. It's who you know. Right. Um, and I will tell you that with 100% certainty. If you have a liter, if you're a cartoonist with a literary agent, you immediately go to the top of the pile um, and they will push you through the big two because they really want to push you to a major publisher because then they, they can sell money. the movie rights. And they get money. <clears throat> they get money. Um. But yes. I was gonna say to you about like people, you know, that, that just keep plugging away. And I'm not saying give up on your thing. I mean, if you it's something you love personally, and you're not you're doing it because you love it, not because you're trying to get somewhere with it. Then mm -hmm. by all means, continue as is. But if you're not getting somewhere, seriously, step back and look at it and be like, is there something else I can do? Can I redo this? Can I maybe just do something completely new? And uh, maybe I'm doing the wrong thing for the wrong time, you know, or something else. And they and then they, they just think that they're they they, they they think they're owed something. And then. Um, if you say anything, oh my gosh, you're so ne they're, you're negative, you're a jerk, we can't stand you, how dare you? We don't want to hear, we, we, want, we want to comment and say, why aren't we getting anywhere? But we don't want to hear the reasons why we're not getting anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then they got really mad too and we said, if you want to, okay, and we still stand by this. If, if you want to do something awesome, you go find somebody who is where you want to be. And mm -hmm. you talk to them, you look and see what they did, you ask them questions, you find out what did they do. Now, granted, everything changes, it's not going to be the same for you as it is for them, but you can get some ideas of what to do. They don't want to hear that. They get mad at you when you say that because they don't do anything and they're like, well, well my opinion should matter. What yeah. have you done? 
nothing. But I I can give you honest advice because I I'm thinking of one person in particular. I can give you <laughs> honest advice, yeah, even though I've never done a dang thing in my yeah, life. But you know, it, you're being insulting to me by saying that my opinion doesn't matter. Well, yeah, I can look at somebody's artwork and give them a fair critique, even if I hadn't done anything. But I'm saying, if you want to be somewhere and you want to get that place, you look at people who did it. Yeah, I I I pissed off a, a friend of ours one time because I basically said I only take advice from people who are where I would like to be. Because I mean, seriously, are you going to take financial advice from somebody who's filed for bankruptcy like eight times? No. No. But you're but not. You're everyone <laughs> filed for bankruptcy. The other person. Yeah. Right. To you. I mean, you know, if somebody's very successful, then yes, I will ask them how they did it and hope that they give me. Uh, you know, let me eat off of their the crumbs off their plate or something because a lot of times people who are successful don't want to give that information out because um, it's proprietary information. Right. And, you know, if they give away the store and they tell everybody else how they did it, then everybody's going to copy them and they're not going to have anything. So just be aware of that. Um, somebody said, if a creator wants to create a new character for the big two, they have to pay a fee. Uh, so creators are more likely to save their original characters for indie publishers. I don't know if the big two are really creating new characters anymore. It seems like they just keep regurgitating. I mean, honestly, the smartest thing to do as a creator is, you know, own your character because it's like, you know, working for McDonald's, like you can make, you know, the best Big Mac, but at the end of the day, McDonald's owns a Big Mac and there's nothing you can do about it. Right. So, um, uh, reading through, he's reading I'm trying to read. He's gotten quiet because he's actually reading. He can't read and talk. At the same I cannot. Time. I can't either. Um, so. Mega Tokyo is still going. Does it make money? I don't know. Unless they do conventions, um, I don't get questionable content either. I can't follow questionable content anymore. It, I think people just stuck with it because it's been around for so long. But if if you haven't read since the beginning, you're going to be completely lost. Or the stick did very well. Yes, they had like 1.2 million dollars. I mm-hmm. think on Kickstarter. Um, Artist collectives are good resources. I agree with that. Uh, the big two seem to follow the safe model from now on. Yes, they do. And I think there's some issues there, at least with Marvel, where I don't know how many new characters they are allowed to create because it seems odd that they keep repurposing, you know, we'll just make the Hulk somebody else instead of creating a new character. Right. Like, I haven't seen any, very many new characters since the 90s, come to think of it. And I think that that might actually be partially be due to uh, film rights mm-hmm. because that complicates the film right yeah, i was just thinking the reason i don't have a lot of new characters is because every time you have a character you're going to have to go do all the copyright information trademark stuff it's a lot of money a lot of time just to make sure that you you make that they, that that's there legally they have mm. the ownership so it's um, just a lot of hassle don't listen to trump for business advice marvel has a chief creative officer for reasons i don't get uh is that i'm not exactly sure is that Sa- sana Aminat? i always drink is she the uh creative officer um, I think I think my my opinion on that just watching that one interview with with Sana Aminat and CB Sobolski oh, yeah. is uh, Aminat is in charge of Marvel. Sobolski is just the figurehead. I don't think he has any real real power because you can usually tell like watching people like I used he's to not do, allowed to because he's a guy. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, that's what I'm telling you. He's not allowed to because he's a guy. Yeah, this is my own personal opinion on Sana Aminat. I mean, I, I'm not, and that's not a diss one way or the other. I'm just saying, like, just watching that interview and looking at the body language mm-hmm. and who uh, uh, conducts themselves like they are large and in charge, it's not Sobolski. Um, he just seems like he's kind of there. Oh, <laughs> you know? So it's like us. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not really kidding. here. Um, <laughs> no, you're there and you're just not in charge. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Sana Aminat's definitely, if, if she, I don't know what her title is, but she, she is definitely, I think, she is definitely in charge of Marvel's, most of Marvel's major creative decisions at well, this point. Because it's she. I mean, I'm trying yeah. to be a jerk. I'm just saying yeah, it's because he's a guy and he can't, he can't have that. Oh, no, we can't have that. Just like what gets me mad is people making the comments about, you can say this and that and everything else under the sun as long as you're talking about white males, but... If you know, but I'm saying if you took the same sentence and replaced it with any other, you know, gender, any other race, any other whatever, it'd be racist. But as long as it's, it's, it involves a white person or a male, usually you can say whatever the heck you want, and well, then it's not racist anymore, what? even though it is. Yeah, that was another thing I, I like. Too. I debated about doing a video on was the uh, the New York Times uh, tech author, and I can't remember her name off the top of my head, uh, but it's an Asian woman, and she has been making some very very nasty comments about white people. Uh, for quite some time now, and uh, you know they seem to be okay with it. And uh, well, that's because. But if you insert anything she said about Asian people, she'd be really mad, and it would be racist. So I'm just saying, it's just like this double standard that never yeah. ends. But um, what were we going to talk about again? <laughs> I'm sorry, we're talking I about don't comics. know. We're talking about comics. Um, okay, so can you guys make a list of comic related websites that try and do their job? Um, I, you know, here's the thing. I don't know if 
I mean, I'll be honest, like, I'm looking at a lot of comic. if we're talking about media, comics, media, comics, journalism, like, I don't really think it exists anymore. No, They're, not fair. Not, not fair. fair it's, it definitely... There's um, a couple that, you know, are trying to be fair, and everybody's trying to, like, and because they're trying to be fair, everybody's questioning their, their validity because they're fair. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But, like, a lot of them, I don't think they're fair anymore. They're just the friendly media for a reason. Yeah. Friendly to certain sides. Yeah. Um, and I think there are a few, like, legitimate indie, com- but most of, the, most of the comics blogs have been gobbled up by corporations. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of them are, I mean, I'll be completely honest, they're on the take of the publishers. They're on the take of the media companies that own them. I mean, Nerdist is owned by Time Warner. Um, I, now, comicbook.com is still fairly independent. Uh, but there, I know that the, like Comic Alliance, I, I think it was Comic Alliance was bought by AOL. A lot of them, they get bought and then they get shut down. Uh, the uh, the beat was bought by Lion Forge, which surprises me because I don't know how Lion Forge affords anything. They they sell no comics, <laughs> you know. They don't sell like, any like real like numbers of comics. Um, uh, yeah, Aminat. I think I think what Aminat has on Sabolsky. I think once that uh, that uh, Asian pen name thing came out, he basically lost all power at Marvel because we saw a lot him coming in and making some really bold changes, canceling books that just did not sell. And now they're backpedaling on that. And I think it's basically like, you know, CB, yeah, so they can have more books that don't sell. Yes. Yeah, so they have more books that don't sell. And I think they basically told CB like, you know, shut up or we're going to, you know, See, kick I you just, out for I don't understand something. what the end game of this is because the end game is to stay, you keep your job, stay in business. If you have things that don't sell and you keep pushing these things that no one wants and doesn't, they don't sell and people that you're pushing it to, the audience you're pushing it to, is not stepping up and buying them and they're not going to step up and buy them, what do they think the outcome is going to be? I'm trying to understand this. I mean, um, just logically, step by step, where do they think this is going to end up? I, I don't know. I think... Or they think they're going to jump ship before it ends up there so they can just keep it going for as long as they can and then jump onto something else and then they don't care what happens to it. I think I that's don't it. Know. I honestly think that's it. I think I think somebody like Amina, I think she's very corporate minded. I think uh, she will try to leave her mark on Marvel and then she will jump ship to another division of Disney. That would be my that would be my own personal because I just she seems like she's a ladder climber. Like mm-hmm. I think she's. Uh, again, just going by the interview I saw of her, she seems like she's a very corporate person. That's what she probably would want to do. So, um, uh, okay. So multiversity is cool. Yeah. They're still around. Um, what's your thoughts on normies ruin everything argument? Uh, they don't, the normies have kept, kept the hobbies alive, (laughs) you know, when the rest of the world kind of gave up on comics, the rest of the world gave up on star Wars, the rest of the world gave up on, uh, games. The normies kept it alive. So, um, she's a Captain Kennedy Marvel. Oh, Diamond is cancer too. Oh yeah, yeah. The Diamond situation. Yeah, I don't even know how Diamond's still in business. To to be completely honest, um, you don't need. They're not necessary anymore. Diamond's not necessary, and I think that's really where everything's going to go. Is eventually, yeah, you know, we're seeing this with web comics, uh, and this has happened with web comics. This is happening now with more mainstream style comics, and it will continue to happen where. Uh, creators are going to cultivate audiences and they're going to sell their books directly to the consumer with or without comic shops. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's how comics are going to be sold and distributed, which means the publishers are going to have less and less of a, a which is why they're play. freaking out too, they are to be honest, out. because they don't have the control. I think that's why they keep, they perpetuate the idea of gatekeeper. You have to go through us. You have to, that's why they try to sabotage people. They view as competition mm. because they're threatened. So, I mean, that's the way it is. Yeah, Shooter's... I thought he was running Valiant. Maybe he's not running Valiant now. I don't know. Jim Shooter's awesome. Uh, he would absolutely kick their ass. What's up with Diamond? Um, Diamond, they're just... They were hemorrhaging money for a while, and, uh, you know... Well, when he, well they was also, he was making his own museum yeah. to himself. I yeah, mean, his, yeah, to that, comics. Yeah. And they, they weren't used to paying work for people. them. Yeah, and they weren't paying... <laughs> and they stopped paying their people. <laughs> they stopped paying their people um, when they built this museum. Yeah, I know. But yeah, it's crazy. just... I don't know. Diamond... We Diamond's don't, people, we don't even work at Diamond, actually. I don't know. Does she still work at Diamond? I don't, I don't know if she does or not. or not. But it's... And here's the thing about Diamond and what we found out is anybody can get the Diamond. Um, the problem is, is if you don't have enough things to deliver every few months to hit a certain threshold for them, uh, you won't stay in and then you won't be allowed to come back. Diamond has become very hostile to indie creators. Uh, more so than it was. Not, just because they ha- they kind of have to be at this point because there's so few comic shops to deal with 
that they really can, that the only safe bets are like Marvel and DC and image. And, but I mean, I remember, you know, diamond uh, previews from 20, 25 years ago and there's all this crazy indie stuff in there and you just don't, don't see it like you used to. Yeah, I don't know. Um, opinion about manga. I think it's awesome. Oh yeah. yeah <laughs> so, I wish I had more time to read it. Yeah. Diamond does exist. Uh, can you see comics becoming more focused on graphic novels? Yes. I think that's already. I think already, they need to be. I think they need to be. I think that's. Economically, anyway. I think that's kind of happening now. But again, the money's not as great. Everybody keeps saying, you know, everybody's going to graphic novels, but the the money is good for some people. Some people have been very successful in graphic novels. It depends on who your publisher is. And, you know, but even the graphic novel sales have dropped because New York Times Ooh. bestseller list is no oh, longer. Oh, yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. A I thing. was going to say, I think floppies are too overpriced for what they are, and people just don't want to pay it. And then if you try to get it on Comixology, they want the same rate for the book as they would in the print, and the, you don't have the overhead yeah. as much. So I, I think the floppies are just, from a standpoint of the consumer, is a problem. But um, you said about uh, graphic novels. Yeah, see, that's the thing um, that's going on is because the New York Times thing, which is the whole we talked about before, but the New York Times, once upon a time, had a category for graphic novels. But the thing is, it was absolute bullshit. Because I'll tell you what, to be a number one gra- bestseller in graphic novels, you didn't have to sell hardly anything to be yeah. in the top ten on the graphic novels list. Yeah, they were so selling was, a couple hundred copies right. and they were making the New and York Times. And it was it's, easily cheated. It's not, people, and we've said this before, the New York Times bestseller list is not like the Amazon bestseller list. It doesn't go strictly by the number of units sold. It's basically the number of units sold in particular locations, they're kind of like the Nielsen's ratings. Mm-hmm. If it's a Nielsen household, in particular bookstores that they have kind of pegged as a New York Times, uh, you know, uh, uh, bookstore, and then whether or not they like you, the editors actually would vet that list. Right. So you know, but, but afterwards, so graphic it novels. Data. It was really easy to get like you know your book on the graphic novel list, um, and people would do that, and they'd go and buy a bunch of copies from a certain location, and you know it was okay because it's a publisher. Everybody knows they did it. Well, now they've taken that away. Uh, a lot of graphic novel, a lot of editors, have especially, have been like, "Oh, we have to get it back. We can't do this. We shouldn't have to compete with other books for a best for a, you know for a bestseller." Yes, you should mm. because you used to have to. It's only been you know how long? Like last 10, 15 years that you didn't. Yeah. And 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 I agree with it. It hasn't even so, been. I think it was ten years. I think that the New York Times uh, graphic novel list was, I think. Well, maybe it's been about 10 years. I think it was like 2007, 2008, when the graphic novel boom was kind of in full swing with manga and everything mm-hmm. else uh, in the 2000s. They, they they brought it in. But yeah, it doesn't... Well, graphic... no, Gaiman was mad. I don't blame him because he no, actually competed mad. with the people that were selling that and still won. He's like, you know, what do you make a comment about the kitty table or something? Yeah, he basically... I forget the, the tweet, but he it was kind of funny because they were making a big stink. A lot of the, the people uh, working in on graphic novels and publishing were making a huge deal out of the New York times pulling the plug on the bestseller list. And Neil Gaiman was like, I remember a time when, uh, you know, comics, uh, used to be on the real New York times bestseller list. And he was like, it wasn't that long ago. And he's like, uh, this feels like you're being, you know, put, uh, put the kitties, t- kitty table. Well, yeah, but it feels, yeah, it feels like, you know, you, you can't compete unless you have a lot of, ex- you know, extra, you know, giving you extra half an hour to run ahead of people in a marathon mm-hmm. or something. And he's not wrong. And I don't, and, and the publishers and stuff, of course, are like all upset about it. Cause they, that's how they ever get in there. They could slap a label on a graphic novel, New York times bestseller when it only sold like 2000 copies, you know, something yeah. like that. Go ahead. Sorry, I got. No, I'm just trying. Got, I'm trying to keep up with the comments, guys. Sorry about this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Uncle Ethan made a half million. Yeah, they did. I mean, this is again. This is what we're talking about. Where and there are a lot of web comics creators that have made hundreds of thousands oh, of dollars yes. too because they connect with their audience directly. A lot of web comics have gotten a lot of hundreds money. of thousands yes. of dollars. I mean, um, I think Girl Genius basically just keeps doing Kickstarters mm-hmm. and they get they usually get two or three hundred thousand dollars per, and that's their their business model basically. Right. You know, um, so. He's reading through. I, I'm trying to read through these here. Um, supporting comics fan, comics gears, independent comics, but paying 25 an issue isn't sustainable. Thoughts? No. Um, usually, a graphic novel should. I mean, that's usually like the crowdfunding price, but normally that would probably be a 15 or 20 dollar book. And right. it depends on if it's hardcover or not. Um, so, what else do we have here? Uh, what are your thoughts well, on last how? Airbender, well, I was reading this one. The last Airbender is just awesome in general, so I can it see is. Why we're that's... excited about Dragon Prince. Here's we the thing. we were gonna do a reaction oh, yeah, video to the that. trailer. Looks Here's really the good. thing: uh, when you have a property that is really popular and really is really awesome, like a TV show to graphic novel, uh, you probably can make it popular because it's it, it, it's being it's popular because it's been popularized by a popular show that lot has a lot bigger reach than like a comic. Like I'm saying, if you if you have a TV show and it got put on Cartoon Network. 
Mm-hmm. A lot more people are going to see that. A lot of people are going to be fans than people who might have had like a little book in Scholastic that you know, was in the back corner right, of a right. thing. So, of course, it's going to do much better because it has a wider audience, which also goes to the fact that these people at these networks get to decide who has the wider audience and who doesn't because kids are going to buy what you push to them. Yeah. If you push these shows to them, that's what they're going to be into because that's what they're seeing. Now, the fact that we have YouTube and stuff now kind of is equalizing that a bit because people, they can go, our kids' favorite shows are on YouTube. So, you yeah. know, I'm just saying. Um, trying to see here. Thoughts on how the big two handle creators' equity? Uh, they don't. You're basically working for McDonald's. And it's more true now, I think, because the numbers aren't there and they're bringing creators in. I think I think they're bringing them in under crappier terms than the older school mm. uh, artists because these guys, they're pulling them off a Tumblr and they're happy to be paid 100 bucks a page, you know. Um, uh, Actually, yes. Mm. Have you thought about bringing a comic to YouTube? We're uh, already working on that right now. <laughs> So, yeah, have you thought about that's coming? Coming, people. That, that is that sort is, of that is coming. We have to get some voice actors, but that is coming. Yeah, we're kind of looking at because we're trying to figure out. I mean, with our own stuff, like you know, where to go with it next, and the webcomic business model. I think now we are talking to some other people. There is a new new thing in the pipeline. Yeah, we can't talk about comics. We can't talk about. We're, we're probably going to be in the beta for that, but. You know, as far as like having our comic out on a standalone site now, especially with the end of Project Wonderful, um, it's not nearly as sustainable as I it say was if, if you're going to start a comic, here's what I recommend you do. If you're going to start a comic, I recommend you go to Webtoons. I recommend you get an audience on Webtoons, build it up, get, a, get you know, interact with your audience, get them excited, build it up, build it up, build it up. And then you take it and you move it to other places like you take it and then you do a Patreon and then you do a, you know, a crowdfunding campaign or you put it on the Internet, like on YouTube or something. I think you need to build up a platform before you can actually do those other things. So you won't make your money on, on Webtoons. You're not going to, mm. but you'll make it other places. But you have to have that platform first. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Oh, it's okay. I'm just trying to keep up with the comments. There's you guys are really trying. There's a lightning bug in here. Wow. Okay. There's a lightning bug in this I'll, I'll save him. I'll <laughs> save him shortly. What are your thoughts about Transformers airing on Cartoon Network 3 in the morning again? That's awesome. I didn't know it was airing on Cartoon Network. Are we talking G1 Transformers? Because a- anytime they run G1 Transformers is, is good. I just bought him a box of Transformers I know today. you did. I, I went to a garage sale. A, bo- a box of Transformers. And I bought him a box of Transformers for $6. So I did good. Um, comics are too expensive. Yeah, I agree with that. I think, I mean, I like what Alterna is doing. I think a dollar fifty, dollar seventy five for a comic is great. Uh, most of, com- I mean, when I was a kid, I used to be able to read pretty much everything Marvel put out because the comics were like seventy five cents. Um, the kids' table thing you're talking about, pretty ironic considering the progressive beliefs they hold. No, uh, yeah, they don't seem too interested in making money. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't understand why. Uh, do you think you bills. any of these indie publishers are making money on their licensing deals, Lions Forge? I no. Um, I don't. I think they're paying. Well, I think they are making. They might break even, but they're not making. Now, IDW, where they screwed up, I think, was with the licensing deals because they had a good thing going when they had original IP. Because now they're going back to lock and key, and they're kind of banking on lock and key to save them. It's like, guys, if you'd spent the last ten years building up a library of of IP that you owned instead of chasing after all this license stuff, uh, you might be in a different place right now. Because yeah. honestly, the license stuff wasn't really promoting the fandom much. I mean, people. No, I mean, it was in the grand it's scheme like of selling things, T-shirts, basically. Well, I'm saying in the grand scheme of things, if someone's a fan of GI Joe, a very small percentage of those people are going to read the comic book. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If like every, if the whole entertainment industry is a giant pie, for example, I like to use pie for example because it I like makes pie. sense. I do like pie. If the whole industry was a giant pie. I like key lime pie. And you have this giant pie of entertainment, and all, and then the small part of it is animation and things like that, and an even smaller part of it, you know, is TV animation, and an even smaller part of it is comic books. It's like if you think of if you think of publishing as a giant pie, um, very a small part of it is actually comics, and an even smaller part of it is web comics. So you know, what I'm saying just think of things as a pie. Anyway, I yeah. had a point to that. I don't know what it is. But pie, always think pie. Go find um, Clownfish Radio. We actually have a podcast out there floating around there somewhere. That was a while ago. And it was from years ago. I mean, we're talking like three or four years ago. But we before we did YouTube, we did a podcast. We tried to warn people that this was going to happen, and they laughed at us. And, you know, it happened. Now, so, yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway. But you're being uh, negative. How dare I'm you? Being, uh, we should do a stream with Comic Pro Secrets. Uh, I don't know if he would invite us on, but that... that you know, I do. I do it if he asked us. But well, you'd be more on that than I would. Uh, my, I don't. We can't keep, do I don't a, keep secrets. We can't no, do. do a cast of BBS or SJWs. Will comfort them too late. They already are. Uh, in fact, I got unfollowed by some longtime friends as of yesterday. Oh, we've been unfollowed. Yeah. Well, you've been unfollowed. No, I've been mostly hidden. I, I don't put the, the geeky on my name, so most people aren't haven't been smart enough to figure that out yet. Yeah. I don't know why they haven't figured out who I am yet. And I don't. It's like I feel like I'm wearing Clark Kent glasses. I'm like. It's, 
very obvious who I am, but I put those glasses on. Where is she? I don't see her. <laughs> you know, it's like, how dumb are you? Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Neon is eating key lime pie, then murdered an entire restaurant with Geeky. There's a movie about it. <laughs> yeah, I love key lime pie. He does love key lime pie. Uh, Marvel or House of Mouse, would they be able to make creators loyalty system like Paul Levitz did when he was ENC of DC. Actually, Disney is actually a pretty decent company. And they're pretty fair when it comes to that sort of thing. Marvel Comics does not... I think they just don't play by the same rules that Disney does. I think they're just kind of doing their own thing. And I don't know what their end game is. I think basically just survive. Um, Mark Wade, bring me Neon's head. Actually, Mark Wade used to like us. Uh, yeah, we used to be friends with Mark Wade. Um, he used to like us. He used to like us. I don't think he likes he us trying, now. He was trying to get us on throw bet, but that's yeah, we were actually going to move Shadow That's we were surprised at yeah. all this stuff. We're like, wow, he wasn't that much of a dick before. <sighs> we, I know we were actually getting. We had many conversations with Mark. We were actually going to move Shadow Binders to throw bet at one point, and then throw bet kind of uh, folded. So I don't know. Yeah. What, I don't even know if it's still around. I'd have so to look, yeah. I have no so idea. yeah. Um, yeah, now he probably wants your head. Back then, he wanted he wanted, I he wanted us for other reasons. I, I don't know. I don't know what happened to Mark because every time we talked to him, he was pretty pretty cool. He was always nice to us, to so I don't know. But um, okay, what happened to Mark? Wait, why did he change? I don't know. Maybe we um, didn't know him as well as we thought. I don't know. I think I think pressure. I think I think the whole comic book industry right now is just it's losing its mind because it's it's dying. And it's if just, you're and especially if you're a white guy and you want to keep your job. You, you really need to play by their rules, I think, as part of it. I mean, I'm just saying that. I, I, I don't know what's going through Mark's. I mean, you know, I don't know what's going through I Mark's. Always, I mean, we, 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 we never talked politics before. No, um, we always and, go along great. I don't you know, know what the deal is. Uh, I was very sad to hear about it. I was very sad. I was very shocked. I mean, especially with the whole Antarctic press thing and all that. I was like, geez, man. So I was very shocked, too, because I've always been more progressive. I've always been like, you know, people have the right to be who they are. I, I guess my thing is, if you're telling, if if, if um, you're saying people have the right to be who they are, then that means everybody has the right to be who they are. And if you shouldn't be, if you aren't ashamed of who you are because you're a certain color, a certain race, certain gender, whatever, you should be proud of who you are. Why is everybody else really gladly proud of who you are unless you're white and a man? But um, <laughs> I've always been like, you know, I'm first one to defend people on stuff. I've always like, if someone wants certain rights and I thought it was, you know, fair, I'd be the first one there. But no matter what I did, I'm still just a uh, alt right Nazi. So whatever. Yeah, same here. I mean, it's, so it's, I guess it's you don't need my help anymore. Um, so I won't help. And that you that anymore. really that's uh, sad. I mean, it's, this was really sad about the Comics Gate situation. Is that you know it has brought out some ugliness in people, and it's made things like I mean, it's like an either or situation. There, there used to be a time when people would have disagreements. And they would sit down and talk about it and like adults. And they'd be and like, I, we'll we just agree scream to disagree. at each other. You could agree to disagree and be like, hey, we're not going to agree on this one point. We'll agree to disagree. But we agree on all this other stuff. So that's awesome. And we'll still move on. But now if you don't agree 100% with everything, then you're automatically the enemy. And it's just, I can't wrap my head around this. I'm yeah. just like, you know, and I'm not one that can be easily controlled anyway. And if you tell me I can't do something, I'm going to be screwed. I'm going to do it anyway. And, you know... Yeah, I know. And I think that's really what it comes down to with, I mean, I mean, as far as, you know, politics, I mean, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about politics again. You know, I think we said repeatedly, we're not Republicans. Um, yeah, I think, there's too much, I think there's too much outrage on both sides. I agree. Yeah. Uh, you know, but the, the problem with the, you know, no least one, in, no one side's punching the other. I'm just saying. Right. <laughs> but then the problem is, is that you've got people who are very, very far left who are pushing people on the fence further right that's true that, i think that's totally true i think the reason i mean i'll tell I mean, i'm not gonna go us. off on i'm not gonna go off on um you know politics and trump and all that but i'm saying I, I i can see how donald trump got elected because the left pushed fence sitters too hard and they pushed back by putting in the first person that was not a Democrat, you know, because they yeah. did not want. I don't more. know. I mean, it's. A, I mean, it's just that. That's a personal opinion. I'm just um, saying. I, I do think they push people. Um, I think there's extremists on both sides, and there's always extremists. And the extremists, unfortunately, everybody gets labeled by what the extremes are and everything. I see it often. Um, it's just that, but 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 both sides guilty. I'm just saying. Yeah, there are there are. Um, just don't be a from, dick. That's a lesson of the day. Right, and there are a lot. Don't be a dick. I mean, the thing that gets me don't about people. this is what you know. It's brilliant about uh, Comics Gate, and I, I did see that video with um. I don't know if I showed that to you or not. That Ethan Van Skyver had where he said, you know, I am Comics Gate, and they had all these you know different people, different colors, different nationalities, yeah, so they different all, genders. That's, that's what gets me about the Star Wars and about you know this is and Spain is that they just keep blaming it on white men, and it's like you do understand that there's a lot of people who don't like the way things are going in comics that aren't white 
and aren't male. And you understand there's a lot of people who don't like the stuff going on with Star Wars that aren't white and aren't male. And you do understand there's a lot of stuff going on with She-Ra that aren't white and aren't male. But speaking of She-Ra and diversity, let's have a word for a moment. So there's a picture. Oh, and I'm like, oh my it. God. There is a picture of the writing team in the writing room of the people working on She-Ra. And you know, they're pushing the like, diversity and you people are not, you, you lack diversity and women can be any shape and color and size and we need, we need more diversity. Diversity, diversity, I mentioned diversity. Well, guess what? There is the team making uh, She-Ra. Except for one person being slightly, slightly more brown in color. It looks like all white women. I'm just saying. Yeah, I just count. They look like the pink ladies from Greece. But I, so where's the diversity? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure some of those people are, you know, lesbians or bi or whatever. I'm sure they are. Well, I know they are because I from what the one person for sure is. But I'm just saying, where's the diversity? It's only diversity when it's when, what the diversity is what you think you are. If that's your diversity. And I'm just like, and a lot of times, a lot of these people are screaming bloody murder about things. It's usually white women. If you ever noticed this? Yeah, I mean, As a I'm, white woman, I'm, I'm saying this. Sorry, yeah, but it's anyway. Just, sorry, that was my no. It's okay. I'm, I'm, well, I want to know now. Here's here's the thing about Sheer. Now, the Mary Sue of all places is the only place that I have read that Chuck Austin is co showrunner of Sheer. Chuck Austin is nowhere to be found in interviews. Chuck Austin is nowhere to be found in photos. Um, but I'm sitting here looking at the picture. I'm like, okay, good for you, ladies. Uh, where where, the, where, the, where are the where are the black folks? Where, well, where the one the girl's Asian? Tanner. But she's not, she's brown, but she's not. But they're like, all women. They're all women. I mean, granted, it's she so, okay, whatever. Well, but, but, I'm wait, like, but the original she had men on it. It did. I mean, it did. It I was, know it Filmation did. was, yeah. I, mean, I know it, was, it did. And actually, a nice Filmation, gentleman wrote us earlier. Yes, we did. We'll She-Ra. talk about that later. We actually had somebody, who believe it or not, it was She-Ra. so cool. Um, a gentleman who worked in animation for 45 years, he he reached out to us. Uh, we'll mention him on another uh, we broadcast. Have a to we haven't yeah more. to digest, but very nice, very nice gentleman. He worked on the original Shira, and he actually reached out to and us. He was a guy, videos. and he worked on Shira. Yeah, I'm just saying, 45 it, it, years it, it he does worked in happen. animation. But Amazing. this is the writing team, so we need diversity. We need a diversity. Every, there, you, there, you can't be you know all white people working on this. You need diversity. But so my point is, it's only diversity when it represents what you think diversity is. Yeah, I'm 100 percent in for diversity, true diversity. I don't, I, I don't like this whole bastardized version of diversity. But you can't yeah. bastards in diversity. I, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to wait. Uh, stop. He's I'm, reading. Oh I my god, you guys are talking so much. I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> Chuck yes. Austin, yes, Chuck Austin. Chuck Austin is. Co- according to the Mary Sue, Chuck Austin is co-showrunner. Yes, women worked on He-Man. Yes. Yeah, and you know what? I watched He-Man. Yeah. I still say Mask, even though it's obscure as it is, one of my favorite shows when I was a kid, and they marketed that to boys. And and G.I. Joe, hell yeah, G.I. Joe, I watched every special every night after school, and I was flipping Scarlet. I was I was in the playground. It was one time everybody was like, I mean, I was, because I was a redhead, and when I was in school, I loved it. I had a very small class. We had like 12 kids, and... The problem with very small classes, they always find someone to single out and pick on. I was usually the one who got singled out and being picked on because I had red hair and I was different. But that was the one time they all were nice to me because they wanted me to play Scarlet. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, go um, Joe. Oh my God. Okay. So let me see. I'm trying to get, uh, trying to get, yeah. What about people hire these pros? Uh, people that hire these pros. I think they got, some of them got hoodwinked in to hire them because they're just like, oh, they're big on Tumblr. So they'll make great, yeah, a great addition to the team. Yeah, that's true. And then by the time they, they figured out that, you know, it was it was too late. They'd already taken over and, you know, they couldn't get them out. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people. Wow. Yeah. Uh, diversity is no white men. Um, well, basically, that's what I'm saying. It, it seems like diver- diversity is anything but white and male. Yeah. So this is actually the Mary Sue of all places. The Mary Sue is the only place where they came out and said that, yes, Chuck Austin is co-showrunner. But we're not hearing the story we're hearing from everyone is it's it's Noel Stevenson who's like like twenty five being and given no the reins. Experience. Chuck Austin, at least, I mean, say what you will about his X Men run. Uh, I know it's been very divisive, but he has been working in animation for a long time. I was gonna say one more thing about Shira, but we're gonna have to wrap this up soon. We're gonna have to make one one more thing about Shira. I was again looking at Shira fan art today. And what I find hilarious is there's always people with one of these Shira fan art, and a lot of it is very good. I would say a strong ninety, ninety five percent of it, um, is she as a female and it's funny because they're they're fighting and they're arguing that she was fine the way she is oh i love this i'm a huge fan of this i can't I'm, I'm oh it's the bestest thing ever i love it i love it i love it and then when they draw their fan art they make she definitively definitively female 
They make yeah, her have the girl the arms, fa- yeah, the, the girl looks- face. They, a lot of times they have, I've seen her with boobs. And it's funny because um, they're making her definitively female in their fan art while arguing that she doesn't have to be definitively female and, and they love everything about her. But in, subconsciously, they're changing it to make her more fem- more feminine. Yeah. I thought that was hilarious. It is when they're doing it in their style, they're making her more feminine. And I'm like, but you just got done saying that, you know, there's nothing wrong with her not being feminine. And then you're turning around and making her feminine. I'm just like, uh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's my sheer rant for the okay, day. Okay, so somebody keeps... Uh, uh, I still agree with shorts under the skirt, though, Lee guys. I'm keeps sure. asking us, sorry for being overly optimistic, do you think creators' equity was handled better? Creators would be more encouraged to make new characters as opposed to legacy characters. Uh, yeah. Yeah, probably. I think. I am really thinking with Marvel, though, it has something to do with movie rights. I think the movie rights always... Um, come into it. Uh, Jamie Tron says, Chuck Austin made Archangel gay. I remember one of the most controversial scenes in his run was Archangel was uh, boinking some young chippy in the air. Like they were, I forget. Uh, what? Was it Husk? Was it one of the, one of the new mutants? I thought he was like, they took, he took her up into the sky and stripped her naked and banged her right in front of all the other X-Men. And that was like how the how the the book ended, and people were like, "Oh my God, what was that?" I'm, I'm <laughs> like, I didn't see it. I'm like, "Oh my God." Who uses what was Tumblr that? to recruit people? Uh, Marvel a lot does. Of people do. uh, uh, the, IDW does. Yeah, the, um, the book yeah. the book industry, uh, Scholastic of them do. Editors do. Uh, Unfortunately, now ta- I think Twitter's turning into Tumblr 2.0. Yeah, we're we're. I'm seriously, I'm, I'm like fed up with Twitter. And Twitter, they're they're introducing so many filters now that if basically if Twitter thinks. For whatever reason that you're a bad person, I think they will they will make sure that you're not featured, you're not searchable, mm-hmm. you're not yeah. Yeah, well, my, um, our daughter loves Shira. I'm reading the comments down below, and she was she was like, I mean, I told you what she said. She's like, it looks like a guy pretend to be Shira, but he forgot to put his bloom boobs in. I mean, that's what she said. Yeah, I and, know. And it was, now I got to tell you a funny one with my daughter. It just is not related, but it is. And it's funny. And I have to, I'm going to share her quote because it's too good. So the other day she was playing a game and these people were making, these girls were making fun of her and they were bullying her in the game. And she was trying to be nice to them and it wasn't working. And then she eventually just roasted the crap out of them because she got tired of playing nice and they were being mean to her. So she's obviously my daughter. But anyway, at the end she said, she was trying to explain to me what happened and she's like, I tried to kill them with kindness, but they wouldn't die. So then I decided to fight fire with fire, and I got my flamethrower. And I was like, that's my girl. <laughs> that's going on a t-shirt. <laughs> I'm going ma- um, to make shirts. I'm going to make shirts. Why don't they recruit on Devi- DeviantArt? Because I don't think DeviantArt is... I don't think they, they yell as much as Tumblr babies do. Um, yeah, so this actually was a thing that happened. This was a Chuck Austin thing where... I'm trying to find the page here. People... They actually have it up. Even yeah, they do. They have the whole scene. This is on. This is on comic book resources. Um, I'm gonna actually. Co- I'm gonna paste this right in the chat, and people can go read this. This for themselves. There we go. Um, so apparently he boinked this teenager in midair. Uh, so I didn't know he was gay because I'm like, what's going? Up? Oh, yep, he's okay. Up, oh, they're gonna fly up into the air, and where are they going? And there goes her clothes, and there's her mom. And that's her mom that's her mom and oh my god if i was her mom i'd be this? getting a shotgun and being like where's his balls yeah it was it's a uh, husk it was husk um yep it's chuck austin so <laughs> anywho anyway we gotta we gotta wrap this up anyway, though you um, have to get up early again tomorrow uh so yeah anyway so this is actually is the thing this is chuck, but yeah chuck austin apparently according to the mary sue he is co-showrunner of shira you're not hearing anything about that because that sort of i think uh you know destroys the narrative that it's just a bunch of girls working on shira but chuck austin does have years he actually left comics to go work in, in animation so um uh yeah but just real quick here to go back to the original topic yeah um this, Sorry. there's another story on comics beat about graphic novelist quitting because she was only making ten thousand dollars a year that's actually for three years that's actually uh pretty good for a graphic novelist there was another lady um who was <laughs> she did a comic and she quit to go do computer stuff because she said she got tired of the hassle yeah and she made so much more money that um, she who was that again com- remember uh, rachel wait comics didn't love me back yeah, and she actually quit and went and did computer stuff because she's like, I just didn't. Rachel Neighbors. Yeah, she's, she's uh, quit. she quit. She quit web comics. She was actually doing web comics. Uh, this is a great read, actually, if you can find it. 
Um, in fact, I'll, I'll paste this one right in the chat too, because this is, she quit web comics because she kind of fell into the trap of doing comics for upvotes and likes, yeah. but she wasn't making Which any money. I think a lot of these people are falling in the trap of, because it's like gambling. The upvotes and the likes and stuff are very, um, they become your currency. And well, you can't spend upvotes. You can't go like to Walmart and say hundred bucks for your bill. And like, well, I got 10,000 upvotes. Can I pay with that? Yeah. Upvotes isn't the currency, but the people, it, it becomes a currency with the, especially with social media. Um, and the people raised with that. It's like likes and upvotes and everybody liking me becomes currency. Why do you think so many people get pissed off when people don't like their books? Cause they put themselves into it. They take it as a personal attack. Mm. They don't separate themselves from the attack. And to them, you're, that you're, you're, you're taking away their currency, whatever yeah. makes whatever validates them. And that's the, you know, the point. So the current, the upvotes in that is a bad way to get addicted to that as your currency. Your currency has to be money. Right. Things you can actually take to Walmart and say, hundred bucks. Great. Here's my, here, here's hundred dollars. Yeah. Now here's my 10,000 upvotes. Cause no one gives a shit about your 10,000 upvotes. Yeah. And upvotes. the thing with a lot of, you know, SJW, uh, you know, using the term. You're uh, just talking readers. the extreme, extreme. I'm talking people. the extreme is yeah. that like, and especially their readers, like they don't seem to, to get the whole money thing. A lot of them don't have a lot of money because they're, they're not capitalists. So they're not good at making money. Um, well, that happens a lot. We hear yeah. a lot about, well, and a lot of people like they, they, I think they need to make sure people take business classes, which is a whole other discussion, but you know, they don't know how to manage money. They don't know how to make money. They no, don't they don't do want to make money. They think they've got this really idealized version of like living in art. Like you just do what you love and the money just magically. And, flows. Your house just magically appears. Yeah. Your fridge just, just magically well, they don't stops. Own it's house. like living Most at home. Of, yeah. You know, you're it's you, like you, living you, at home. You, you, your mom and dad are. pay, I mean, <laughs> your mom and dad pay the mortgage. Your, your fr the fridge is automatically stocked with your favorite things. You don't have to do anything. And it's just, you know, <sighs> so my advice people, uh, I, I said that on Twitter is um, when you're writing something, make sure your characters are good mm. because I think characters sell uh, books, sell works. You, if you're trying to build an audience and you want them to actually like, you know, invest themselves into you, invest money into you. I guess money is what I'm saying not themselves. That just sounds like that comic we just looked at. But invest uh, money into you. You're gonna have to make characters and, and that are relatable and that resonate with them. And your characters should come first, and plot and story should come second. And I'm not saying that's you know like you know I'm saying they're still important. They're both important. I'm saying put character above plot. And the reason being is people want to. No one says I remember that that. Uh, you know, social justice message they told, told me. They remember the characters. I remember this character. I remember. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So don't preach to people. Make good characters. Entertain them. Don't be preach at them. Yeah, be bit. relatable. People people don't they don't understand these characters and they're so Mary Sue and people are like, I hate this character so I can't relate to it. Yeah, don't preach that. Be entertaining. And, you know, understand that, you know, you might have to do something else while you make your comics because the money might not be there. Does it mean it won't always be like that? You might get you might be lucky and mm. it won't be that way, but understand that going into it. Yeah, and people just have these really weird like, oh, because point zero one percent of comic book artists you know, did, did, you know, or making millions of dollars. I can too. Uh, but you know, just did real quick on this Rachel neighbors. Um, oh, she sorry. basically, everything was, everything was great for her. She had hordes of fangirls, weekly syndicated web comics. She got paid well for, and then she needed surgery and she didn't have health insurance. Oh, that's a whole other um, one. that's a huge issue with, with we'll see comics. One. Can we do that another one? Cause it's really going late now. So, well, we'll talk about health insurance. I, I, well, later. I can't, can't, no, I can talk about it super quick. I will. I will give it like five minutes. So, I'm sorry. We're we're already we're already discussing this. We'll keep it on one one video. I'm trying to find on here. Um, ah, shoot. You have to spell insurance right. <laughs> yeah, I got into it with uh, Durf. Before, actually. Durf back Durf. Um, well, well nobody's in Durf. Nobody I mean, knows. Here we know. go. I got into it with him uh, a year or so ago. He was going on about how, because, uh, you know, if, if Obamacare ended, so many cartoonists would basically have to quit because they wouldn't have subsidized uh, health care. Which, I mean, honestly, that, that affects everybody. It's not just cartoonists. That's what right? I said. I mean, it doesn't, um, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. But, uh, you know, basically the comic book industry, as it is now, because it pays so poorly, it, I honestly think it's being subsidized by the government. I think there's so Probably. many people that are on... Um, uh, you know, uh, Medicare, there's so many people that are probably getting some financial assistance uh, because they're making so little money, I mm -hmm. think. And, and, and we talked before about, you know, spouses having to yeah, that's uh, else keep I, I their, really push home. you know, spouses and partners and parents and people, you know, basically keeping comic book artists uh, until they're able to, you know, maybe possibly maybe get to a point where they can actually make enough money to live on. Um, so, 
they kind of freak out anytime you, and I think that's why so many of them are freaking out about, you know, Trump too, is they're like, oh my God, this, you know, I, I might actually have to make, something or do something that's profitable mm -hmm. you know instead of making comics and i basically i got into it with durf uh back durf. didn't mean to get into him i basically was just like i, I didn't mean to get into oh, it with him but sorry i was distracted by the ad that are you human Two show is very good just oh, so Drama you know Fever. okay cool. just so you know it's a good show okay. i'm just telling um, you go ahead sorry but no i was just I like to tell them that's a good show go i ahead. was just like you know the the perils of working in comics are very clearly spelled out Okay, I think they need to be spelled out more clearly for young artists, but it is not a stable industry at all to get into. Um, and so, you know, you work in comics for 10, you might have a good run well, for see, a couple years. Thing. I mean, I think, yeah, I think if you have someone that can, that can keep you while you do it, you should at least be honest. Like you said, I think you should at least be honest to young creators and be like, okay, I am full time, but I'm not making money because full time work does not full time doing it full time does not mean full time pay. Yeah. And I, I think it's a disservice to lie to people or let them believe what they, you know, believe that you're, you know what I'm saying? Right. Well, what you're right. saying. Basically what you're saying. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. And I think it's just, yeah. And that's the I'm thing. It's, it's, by it's, the oh, that's okay. There, there are a lot of hours involved in, in making comics. And I think people think just because they put the time into it, that they're going to be financially successful and um, you can't tell them otherwise. I mean, that's what you, when you try to tell them you're negative, you're just yeah. a meanie. You're just trying to, you're just trying to bring them down. You jerk. Yeah. How dare you, yeah. you know, you shower them with things like realism. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we don't want to deal with reality. That's why we do comics. Um, yeah. With, well, the, the, the Patreon and Patreon and all that. I mean, it's kind of sort of become that way now with, um, you know, with, with Patreon. I'm not knocking Patreon. I think it's a good system, but I think that it's almost like being a street performer anymore where you do the work and then you're hoping somebody will give you, you know, a fiver or something for, for doing it. But you're like dancing on the street mm -hmm. at the street corner. There's no guarantee you're going to make money. Um, you're just doing it, hoping that you'll make money. And that's, you know, if, if you want to have like a house and like kids and a car and health insurance, you know, it's not a really good business model. Well, I think everybody got used to free too, or low cost because it, when they had the economic, you know, collapses and stuff, web comics, boom, web comics were yeah, still free did. and they you did. could get entertainment for free. And now people need to make money, but people are so used to free that they just want free now. And they'll, and if they, and we've had people say, well, if you're going to do this, hide it behind a paywall or put a, a landing page on, we have to click one extra page. We're going to go to somebody else. Cause we don't want the hassle. We want free. We want it free our way. How dare you? Yeah. But anyway, I know. we got to wrap this up. Yeah. Oh, well, I answer a couple here. Yeah. Constructive criticism. Oh, I just saw that earlier. They can't. Um, I didn't look into it very much yet about the Terminator picture. I, I, I'm going to look into it more before I state my opinion on that. But yeah, I was like, uh, what? Constructive criticism what? is harassment to the far left. Yes. Um, we live in an era where uh, younger people especially can't. <laughs> younger, I've been trying. Younger people can't handle criticism. Uh, of all new Marvel characters, Kamala Khan, and Miles Morales, I heard are the best received. Uh, yeah, I think Kamala Khan and Miles Morales, especially Miles Morales, I think have been very popular. Uh, I could see them in the MCU. Um, yeah, so uh, don't quit your day job. I think that's really where we okay, need yes. to end it. All right, so. we got to end it because it's like, we, we told our kids, oh, we're going to be in there half an hour. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> I know. Sorry. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. i um, not trying to crush any dreams. Just trying to be realistic. No, still Comics. have dreams. Just understand. Yeah, still have dreams. Just be pragmatic. You can do anything you want to do. You just have to figure out a game plan. You have yeah. to figure out a viable game right. plan. If it means working a day job and doing comics at night, then that's what you do. You know, you got to eat. You got to keep the lights on. If the lights aren't on, then you can't run your computer. You can't make comics. You know, it's just common sense. It's just common sense. If you can't take care of yourself, can't afford health insurance, you can't make comics. He crushes a lot of dreams. I do. <laughs> I do. Okay, guys, uh, thank you so much. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, tell your friends, tell your family, uh, tell your dog. Tell your dog, but I don't think he's going to care or she's going to uh, care. Yeah, we're almost at 6,000 subscribers. Dog's pronouns. We're almost, yeah, <laughs> we're almost <laughs> at 6,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for that. We had 1.2 million minutes of watch time this yeah. month so far. I'm sorry, that's a so, t-shirt too. You know, I don't want to assume your dog's pronoun. No. Well, what if you get neutered? Then what are they there? Well, you definitely don't want to assume your okay. dog's pronoun. Um, so have nerd. Yeah, we should. Uh, anybody wants to reach us, it's shout out at clownfishtv.com. And I do have some emails from some of you. I got, I got to get back to you. I've just been so busy. We're so busy. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and we're going to go. All right. We'll see you guys later. Bye.